Isaiah chapter 7. And we are going to read verse number 14. Verse number 14 of Isaiah 7 says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now in chapter 9, verse number 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Shall we just bow our heads in a moment of prayer? Our gracious God and our Father, we thank Thee, for Thou hast revealed to us the truth about the first advent of our Lord Jesus Christ and the meaning and the significance of this in our lives. We thank Thee that Thou hast sent to us the Savior, and we thank Thee for saving our souls. This morning we pray, the Lord, that You will keep on uh, saving lost people, and we pray for those that might be here with us, without Christ, they might receive the gift of eternal life. Guide thy word into the hearts and minds of people. Help us, help us that we might truly give all the glory and the honor to your name for everything that will ever be accomplished. Because we ask these things in Christ's name and for his sake alone. Amen. Now I'd like to speak to you on the fourfold meaning and significance of the birth of Jesus Christ. We know that uh, every time that uh, we in the Philippines celebrate Christmas, uh, we do not only see the Christians doing it, but even those people who are not very sure about being a Christian or being saved are also doing it. And so we can say, my friends, that no other birth has been so significant and so meaningful in the history of mankind, both in the lives of the true believers and in the lives of those who are professing Christians, because it affects many aspects of our lives. It affects the physical as well as the spiritual aspect of people's lives. It affects both the material and the religious aspect of people's lives. It affects both the mental and the emotional sides of our faculties. As a matter of fact, there are so many people today who are so emotional in the celebration of Christmas, especially when they have problems. But being emotional, they become undoctrinal. They do not know the meaning of it at all. You know, there are so many things that have been added to the story of Christmas, which are not necessarily found in the Word of God. And some of them are coming from human traditions. Lalo na dito sa ating bansa, napakarami natin mga traditions dito na idinagdag sa pagsisilbrate ng Christmas. Nariyan na ang simbang gabi. Nariyan na ang putubongbong. Diba? Nariyan na ang uh, mga decors, mga lights, mga ilaw, ganyan, mga palamuti. At ibang mga bagay na hindi natin nakikita sa banal kasulatan. Bukod pa sa mga traditions natin, ay mayroon pang iba't ibang mga kultura na naidagdag sa pagsiselebrate ng Christmas. Kanya, aking napanood sa television, na iba naman daw ang mga Germans kung mag-celebrate ng Christmas. Iba naman ang mga Americans. Iba naman ang mga Chinese at ibang mga bansa na nabati sa kanila mga kultura. At uh, kung ano na mga idinaragdag na mga kuminsan napapaniwalaan ng mga inosenteng tao, katulad ng Santa Claus. 
At kung minsan sa television, lagi, lalo nilang pinatutunayan na talagang meron ngang Santa Claus. Nung araw, nung maliliit pa kami, naniniwala kami dyan eh. Kaya tuwing Christmas, tumiting kami sa langit, baka dumating Santa Claus na mayroong anim na reindeers. Ganyan. Na lumilipad-lipad dyan. Yung pala ay isang panluloko ng mga magulang sa kanilang mga anak. Na hindi nila sinasabi ang totoo. Magsabit na niya kayo ng medyas dyan at pumunoy niya ni Santa Claus ng mga candies. Pero sila ang gumagawa noon. Yun ang mga bata, napaka-inusente, hindi nila alam. Kaya paniwalang-paniwala sila. Mga kapatid, kahit na po iyan ay nagbibigay ng katuwaan at kasiyan sa mga bata, huwag tayo magsisinungaling. Amen? Huwag nating bubulahin ng mga inusenteng isipan na mapaniwala sa mga bagay na hindi totoo. Ganyan. Kasi kukunti lang ng mga magulang ang nagsasabi sa mga bata ng totoo. Kanya ang problema niya, sa kanilang paglaki, napakahirap ng bunutin sa kanilang konsensya, sa kanilang isipan yung kanilang maling paniniwala. Sapagat sinasabi, ayan ang turo sa amin ng mga magulang namin. Yan ang turo sa amin ng mga lulot-lula natin. Namin. Kaya hindi nila binabawi. Mga kapatid, kung tayo nagbibiro, pagkatapos ng ating mga pagbibiro, magsabi tayo ng totoo, nagbibiro lang ako. Para hindi bagang seryoso yung mga nakapakinig sa atin. Kanya. Katulad nung, alam nyo, mayroong nangyari nung nakaraang mga Pasko, yung tinatawag nilang Ninos Innocentes. Alam nyo ba yun? Yung araw na yan, napakaraming taong nangungutang. Ha? Palibasa, hindi nalalaman ng mga tao na yung palay, araw daw ng Ninos Innocentes. Eh, wala din sa Biblia po yan. Mangungutang pagkatapos hindi babayaran, tapos sabihin, Ninos Innocentes, ay, yan ay swindling po yan, mga kapatid. Ha? Isang uri ng pandraya yan sa pangalan ng Christmas. Sa pangalan ng Panginoon, isang uri ng pandaraya bilang mga tunay na kristyano, huwag tayong gagamit na anumang uri ng mga pagsiswindling na ganyan para huwag maluko ang tao. Ganon eh. At, uh, alam nyo, tayo mga kristyano, kinukonsidera natin na ang kasaysayan ng Pasko ay hindi lamang nababatay sa mga tinatawag nating facts of history na katulad nung aking ipinahayag ng ano nakaraan linggo. Although we do not know the exact date of the birth of Jesus and we're going to study that on Friday, but we believe in the facts of history that the Savior was really born, that He became a man, that He really died on Calvary's cross, that He really was buried, and that He rose again. They are facts of history that we believe in. We do not question the dates about those things. Now, what I'm going to point out to you this morning, my friend, is that we should not just be emotional about this occasion. Kung minsan na nababagbag ang damdamin natin kapag nakakakita tayo ng batang mahirap. Katulad ng pagtingin mo sa dario kanina, naroon si Mayor Matay. Hawak-hawak ang isang orphan na galing doon sa Hospicio de San Jose. Na binibigyan ng mga laruan ng mga taong may kakayahan. Abay siguro pwede naman nilang bigyan ng laruan niyan kahit na hindi Christmas, hindi po ba? kahit nabuwan ng Hunyo, Olyo, Agosto, pwede nila bigyan ng Christmas yan. Pero kung minsan, ay tinataon ko nila sa araw ng Desyembre para maging sentimental. Hindi po ba? Maging emotional. Na mayroong mga iyakan dyan, aawa, katulad ng uh, advertisement sa TV, doon sa batang uh, ang kanyang magulang ay nagkahiwalay, na ganyan, ay na magbalikan, at tinawagan sa telepono, nagkabalikan uli ng Pasko, di ba? Masyadong sentimental, masyadong emotional. But one thing that I'm sure is that they are undoctrinal. They do not really know the biblical significance of the birth of Jesus. They do not really know the uh, the meaning of the birth of Jesus in their lives and in the whole world. Now I have uh, four points I'd like to elucidate to you this morning quickly. Number one, The number one 
significance of Christmas is that Jesus Christ came from heaven. Heaven is the origin of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I would like you to open with me to the scriptures that I'm going to just uh, give to you this morning. In John chapter 3, verse number 3. Now you just kind of, if you have an automatic Bible there, you open your Bibles and let us read for ourselves. John chapter 3, uh, verse number 31, where it says, He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. Now, sino nangungusap dito? Ito po ay mga pangungusap ng ating kung Kristo tukol sa kanyang sarili. Na talagang hindi siya makalupa. Hindi siya produkto ng marital relationship. Hindi siya galing dito sa lupang ito. Hindi siya galing sa likabok na tulad ng pagkakagawa kay Eva at kay Adan. Kaya kahit kailan hindi bumalik sa alikabok ang katawan ni Kristo. But He came from heaven. That is His origin. Now, chapter 6, verse number 38 of the same book. It says, For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of Him that sent me. Now, the Jewish people had a hard time trying to believe that Jesus Christ came from heaven because they knew that He was born of Mary. Ah, kilala namin yan sa Jesus na yan. Hindi ba anak yan ni Jose na karpintero? Bakit natin paniniwalaan yan? Walang pinag-aralan yan. Walang edukasyon yan. Dahil sa, par- sa kanilang familiarity, sa pamilya ni Jose at si Maria, they could not believe the Lord Jesus that He came from heaven. But it is a fact that Jesus Christ came from heaven. And that was his own declaration. Now in chapter 8, verse number 23, another verse. Chapter 8, verse 23 says, And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. Now that is a very clear declaration of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Kayo ay mga tigalupa. Ako ay hindi. Galing ako sa langit. Alam niyo kapatid, wala pang sino mang tao na nabuhay sa ibabaw ng bundong ito na nakapagsabi ng ganyan. Magbula kay Ebat kay Adan, dumanang lahat ng mga magagaling na lalaki at magagaling na tao na ipinarak sa mga tinatawag na bughaw na dugo. Subalit, wala nakapagsabi na sila galing sa langit. Si Kristo lamang ang mayroong gaano ng deklarasyon. I am from above. You are from beneath. Ano ba yung nagagwat ng tao sa kalalagayan ni Kristo? It is like the distance of heaven and earth. Subalit ba yung mga tao ngayon na they are relegating the personality of our Lord Jesus Christ to just a mere man. Just because He was born. Now listen my friend as I have repeatedly said that the birth of Jesus Christ in Bethlehem's manger was not the beginning of His existence. He was already there in the Old Testament time, in the eternity past. He belonged to the Trinity. He was the second person of the Godhead. But it, it requires that Jesus Christ should be born in order to become a man that he might finish the work of man's redemption. So he came from above. In verse number 42 of the same chapter, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father... He would love me for I proceeded forth and came from God. Now, nobody can ever say that. Huh? Kasi tayo mga tao, alam natin kung saan tayo galing. Magmula ng mamulat tayo, nakita natin ng mga mukha yung mga magulang natin. At hindi natin ang may pagkakala. Yan ang alam ako. Hindi ako galing sa langit. Subalit, ang ating pinag si Kristo, nagsasabi, galing siya sa Diyos. I came from God. I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself. But He sent me. Now, in, uh, in the book of John chapter 16, here we find the belief of the disciples themselves. Because of what they've heard from our Savior, 
whenever he would speak about himself, these disciples believed this declaration and they began to proclaim it. In John 16, 30, we find here that it says, Now are we, we are sure that thou knowest all things, and it is not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. That is the belief of the disciples. And listen, that is also our belief today. Amen? Yan din ang ating paniniwala ngayon. Na si Kristo na ating Panginoon na hindi galing sa lupa, kundi galing sa lagat, galing sa Diyos. Now, tignan natin dito sa 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and in verse number 47. Ito'y sulat ni Apostol Pablo at sinabi niya, The first man is of the earth, earthly. Sino tinutukoy dito? Si Adan. He is the first man. Kaya tinatawag sa book of Romans na the first Adam. Doon tayo nang galing, hindi po ba? Maging sa ayaw nyo at gusto nyo maniwala, doon kayo galing kay Eva at kay Adan. Kahit na mayroong mga professor dyan sa UP na sasabihin sa inyong galing kayo sa unggoy, o galing kayo sa palaka, o galing kayo sa balyena, o sa ampamang hayop, hindi totoo yan. Ang totoo ay galing tayong lahat doon kay Eva at si kay Adan. We are all the posterity of Adam and Eve. We do not believe in the theory of evolution. Kaya sinabi po na po sa Pablo ito. Ang we have, the first man is of the earth, earthly. Now the second man, sino tong second man ito? Yung tinatawag sa Bible na second Adam. The second Adam is the Lord. Siya ang ating Panginoon na nagmula sa langit. Listen, if we will just study the Word of God, we can have a confirmation of the things that we preciously believe so that we may have something to explain to some religious circles today that do not believe in the deity of Christ, they do not believe in the heavenly origin of the Lord Jesus Christ, and many other features of His personality. So that we can teach them and tell them because we know. Now, not only that Jesus Christ had a heavenly origin, but the second thing that I would like to point out to you, although it may overlap a little bit with this point, is the incarnation. Now, as I've said that the word incarnation is never found in the Bible. Just like the word nativity, you cannot find it in the scripture. Just like the word Christmas, it's never found in the scriptures. But it all means the same thing. It means the birth of Jesus. Amen? It means that Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary. And that is what, that is what we call the incarnation. Now, let us look up uh, from the prophecy of Isaiah here. In our text, as we have opened up uh, in the seventh chapter of Isaiah, and in verse number 14, you will notice, my friend, that the prophet Isaiah penned this about 742 years before the birth of Christ. Napakatagal ng panahon, no? And so, therefore, the Lord Himself <coughs> shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And shall call his name, what? Emmanuel. What is the meaning of that name? God with us. Now let me warn you a little bit. There are some translations of the Bible, like the American Standard Version, and many other perversions of the Bible, that have taken away this word, virgin. In the list of the line, salitang virgin, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a young woman, and sabi ron, a young woman shall conceive and bear a son. Now, what is the difference between a virgin and a young woman? A young woman does not necessarily be a virgin. Mayroon kong mga kilalang mga matatanda virgin pa. Ha? Huh? I have learned that in America, sabi niya, girls there from 12 years old up, three out of every ten are not anymore virgins. 
I'm not trying to be vulgar, you know. But this is a fact of history. The Lord Jesus Christ was incarnated in the flesh and he was not the product of procreation. Dito sa aklat ng Genesis chapter 3 verse number 15. Ang sabi ron, and that is the first prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ when it says that he was the seed of the woman. Now all of us are seed of men. But Jesus Christ was the only person who was known as the seed of the woman. He did not have a human father. Even Mary, the woman that was made by God as an instrument in this birth, was not claimed to be his own mother. As a matter of fact, there was no time in the book, in the New Testament books, that Jesus Christ ever addressed Mary as mother. Alam nyo, nabasa ko nung araw sa isang Catholic write-up. Ang sabi nila, dapat daw igalang ng Panginoon ang kanyang ina. Sapagat si Mary ay may part sa buhay, sa kaluluwa, yung physical constitution ng ating Panginoon si Kristo. At bilang pagpapatunay, sinabi nila, sapagat siya ay sumuso ng gatas ni Maria, kaya nagkaroon siya ng party ni Maria. Para magandang pakinggan na philosophy yan. Ang ibig sabihin niya ng mga batang sumususo ng gatas ng baka ay nagkakaroon ng party ng baka. Di ba ba? Ay maraming mga bata ngayon na hindi na pinasususuron sa kanyang ina kundi doon sa bote. Baka. Gatas ng baka o gatas ng kambing o gatas ng kalabaw. Ang ibig sabihin, mayroong parting kalabaw yan. Mayroong parting kambingel o baka. Kaya mali po ang kanilang filosofiya. Kahit na yung ating mga medical technologies, hindi ko maniniwala dyan. Ganyan. Kaya mali ang claim. Now listen, there was nothing from Joseph nor Mary that became a part of the humanity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that he was conceived of the Spirit of God in the womb of Mary. The only role that Mary had there was to give birth and to take good care of him. And we appreciate Mary for that. I'm not trying to discredit Mary. Huh? But I don't believe, my friend, that Mary is the mother of God. Listen, God has no mother. Walang ina ang Diyos. He was incarnated in the flesh. As a matter of fact, he was known as Emmanuel, God being with us. In what way? In the incarnation. God put upon his own being the form of a flesh, as the Apostle Paul tells us. He, uh, he made himself of no reputation and he made himself flesh and dwelt among us, according to John 1.14. The only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Right here in Isaiah 9, 6. His name shall be called Wonderful. I do not know of any other kind of a, you know, vocabulary that could be better than what the, the prophet Isaiah has uh, used here. His name shall be called Wonderful. Because everything in his life was wonderful. Full of wonders that is. His birth was wonderful. His life was wonderful. His character was wonderful. His love was wonderful. His sufferings were wonderful. His ministry was wonderful. His teachings and his preachings were wonderful. When he died on Calvary's cross, it was a wonderful death. Because it was the death of his Savior. When he ascended to heaven, it was wonderful. And then he's coming back as a wonderful king. You know that? That is why the prophet Isaiah, perhaps he looked at his dictionary and he could not find any other term that would be fitting to describe the very person and character of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so he called him to be wonderful counselor. The mighty God. Alam niya, ibig bawasin ang mga kulto ito. Hindi rin siya Diyos. Ay sabi niya siya, 
makapangyarihang Diyos si Kristo. Sabi dito, listen, if you cannot believe the deed of Jesus Christ, you can never be saved. I guarantee that. You can never go to heaven. Kasi ang sabi ni Kristo, if you will not believe that I am He, you shall die in your sins. Ano ba tinutukoy rin yung kanyang pagkatao? No. If you cannot believe that He is the Messiah, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, you shall die in your sins. And then we find that uh, in Philippians chapter 2 verse number 7, in the writings of the Apostle Paul, he said that he took upon him the form of his servant. Although when Jesus Christ became a man, his humanity was real. It was not just a fantasy. He had a real flesh and blood. He had a real bone. He had a real human spirit. He had a real human soul. He had a real human body, a human flesh. But listen, my friend, that is what he took as a form of a servant. He was made in the likeness of man. But he did not diminish his deity. He did not diminish his being divine. Now in 1 Timothy 3.16, I think if somebody will ever question the date of Jesus Christ, you show that person this text. Kasi sinabi po rito, sa 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 16, and without controversy, yeah. Walang pagtatalo. Ang ibig sabihin, hindi dapat pagtalunan ang doktrina ito. Walang sino man na dapat magdebate pa rito. May panig ng pagkatao ni Kristo. May panig ng pagkadyos ni Kristo. There ought not to be any debate or any controversy on this subject. Kasi ang sabi po ni Apostle Paul dito, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, sin of angels, Preach unto the Gentiles, believe on in the world, and receive up into glory. Nobody can ever refute that. Nobody can ever refute the truth of God's word. No controversy. Kaya nung araw, nung ako'y bata pang Kristiyano, mahilig akong magkapag-debate sa mga iglesia ni Manalo. Kasi yung kanilang mga metodo na patutunayan ko sa inyo na si Kristo ay tao lamang. Sitas. Meron pa siyang tagabukas ng sitas. At sinasabi, alam nyo, ginagamit nila ang Tagalog Bible eh. Masyado yung emphatic. At sinasabi po dito ng wika mismo ni Kristo, bakit nyo ako gustong patayin? Ako'y taong nagsasabi sa inyo ng katulad. Nakita nyo? Tao! Mga kapatid, hindi sapagat sinabi ni Kristo ang tao siya, hindi na siya Diyos. Sapagat siya Diyos na nagkatawang tao. Hindi sapagat sinabi ni Kristo na siya alipin ni Jehovah na hindi siya Diyos. Hindi na naiintindihan ang incarnation. You see? All right. The witness of the Spirit in 1 John 4.2. Narito pa ang unang Juan, 4, 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Ang lahat na nagpapatotoo na si Christ na pa rito sa laman ay isang doktrena na galing sa Diyos. Subalit ang nagkakailan yan ay galing sa jablo, Di ba? At kapag mayroon man lumapit sa inyong tao na dalaan doktrina ng jablo, anong sabi dito sa verse number, uh, in the second John, verse number 10, 
verse number 10 of 2 John. Ang sabi dito, If any come, if there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine. What doctrine? The divinity of Christ. The deity of Christ. If he brings not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed, for he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deed. Mga kapatid, alam nyo, tayo mga Pilipino, tayo ay mga hospitable tayo. Di ba? Lahat ng kasing tao ay pinatutuloy natin sa ating mga tahanan. Kahit na hindi natin kilala. Pag may tumuktok sa ating pintuan, bubuksan natin ang pintuan natin, tuloy po kayo, maupo kayo, magkapi kayo, mag-refreshment kayo. Masyado tayong hospitable. Alam nyo ba na sa Amerika, kahit na winter season, kumatok ka, sa pintuan nila at ang bawat pintuan ng American home mayroong kadena mayroong chain lock mabuksan mo yan ang ganun lang ang crack tatanungin ka pa what do you want? hindi sasabihin siya please kami no anong kailangan mo? kahit nakilala mo na yan sapagkat nasubo kong kasama ko si brother Jay pastor doon sa Graham, Texas sabi niya brother Abante would you like to come with me on visitation? I said yes It was on a cold day and the snow was two feet above the ground. Very cold. I was using my suit and on top of my suit was an overcoat and I had a towel around my neck and a cup of my ears and a gloves in my hand. We knocked at the door about 10 o'clock in the morning. His member and the lady peeped through the crack of the door and says, Yes, Pastor, what do you want? Well, we just want to see where his brother Abante from the Philippines. Well, Pastor, I'm sorry, the kids are still in bed. So he, she closed the door. May maniwala ako kung dito sa Pilipinas na open kay. Kasi hindi ko na kailangan pupuntahan niya. Bastos! You see that? Pero dito, sa aspektong ito, hindi bastos ang tumanggi ng isang taong nagtuturo ng doktrina. Pag sinabi niya sa'yo, o oh, saan po kayo galing? Ako po iglesia ng Kristo. Sorry, bang! Ako po'y saksi. Alam natin kung sino-sino yung mga yun. Ah, saksi ko kayo. Sorry, sarang ang pinto. Kaya ako po ay Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints, o kaya Mormon. Sarang ang pinto. O kaya mga babae na kadamit puti at sabi nila, kami po ay mga members ng World Health Organization, sarap pinto, sabi nista yan. Kami po ay mga membro ng Family of God, lalong delikado yan. Kami po ay mga children of God, galing sa kabite, delikado yan. Mga kapatid, kinakailangan maalaman natin ang pagdidesisyon patungkol sa mga bagay spiritual. Sabagat napakaraming nasisinsay. I don't know, our time is going so fast. But let me just go through this quickly. Number three, the virgin birth of Christ. Now we believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin because if He was not, He cannot be our Savior. He cannot be the Son of God. He cannot be divine. If Jesus Christ was not born of a virgin, then he was a sinner like us. But he was not. Because he was born of a virgin Mary. And listen, my friend. Mary was only a virgin until the birth of Christ. Ngayon po'y hindi na siya virgin. Pero ang tawag pa rin sa kanya ay Virgin Mary. Samantalang may mga anak siyang, ilan ba yun, apat o lima? na mga half-brothers and sister ng ating Panginoon at ang ama nila is Joseph nakalagay roon sa aklat ng Mateo These were the half-brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ Alam niyo itong mga kaibigan ating pare hindi na niniwala dyan kaya raw tinawag na brothers yan ay kapatid sa pananampalataya No, that is not They were really the children of Joseph and Mary So Mary did not maintain her virginity 
Mayroon ba namang virgin na nanganak na? Ha? Wala na. Kahit na hindi pa nanganak yan. Pag naging pregnant na po yan, hindi na virgin niya. Amen? Start! Eh kahit na saan yung husgado paraanin yan. Man, I have gone through many things like that. I have watched some uh, law, I mean, uh, court proceedings on that, on that matter. And I have observed, I have learned that a woman that has become pregnant or that has a relation with a man is not anymore a virgin. But the Lord Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary. Number three and number four. The mission of Christ, the most important thing. Ano ang kanyang pagkaparito? I will just give you these references and then we'll quit. All right. In the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verse number 15. What was the purpose of Christ coming here on earth? 1 Timothy, 1.15. Okay, here's what the Bible says. This is a faithful saying. This is the testimony of Paul. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to what? To save sinners of whom I am chief. Thank God for that. Amen? He came to save me. He came to save you. He came to save us all because we are all sinners. Now turn to uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse number 17. You know, Jesus Christ was always accused by the Jews as a violator of the law of Moses. According to the Jews, Jesus Christ did not fulfill the law. But here in Matthew 5, verse number 17, the Bible says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Or the prophets, I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Listen, every aspect of the life of Jesus Christ is a fulfillment of the scriptures. From the time of his birth to the time of his ascension, his very character, the kind of life that he lived, was a fulfillment of the law. Then turn to uh, chapter 20 of Matthew. Matthew 20, and in verse number 20, here is what the Bible says. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. What did he come for? To give his life a ransom for many. He did not come to be served, although he was Lord, he was God. But he did not come to be served, but he came to serve. Alam niyo, gusto ng tao pagsisibihan, di ba? Not the Lord. Not the Lord Jesus Christ. Ang tao ngayon, pag medyo mataas-taas ng position sa kanyang buhay, ayaw na mag-serve. Ha? O, sa mga katulong lang yan. Ayaw na maghugas ng pinggan. Ayaw na maglipit ng kanyang uh, kinain at hinigaan. Ayaw na magtrabaho. Oy, ako'y amo dito. You should serve me. Bay, mahiyahiya kayo. Ang ating po na si Kristo ay naparito kung maglingkod. Hmm? You remember that he even washed the feet of the disciples. He showed them the example of servitude or service. Okay. Now in Luke 44, in verse number 43, the Bible tells us that he came to preach the kingdom of God. In Luke chapter 4, 43. Now, he did not come to preach just a good life. Because if that was the case, then there was no hope for those people after death. But listen, my friend, every person that accepts Jesus by faith enters into his kingdom. And his kingdom is an eternal kingdom. Na hindi matatapos, hindi mawawasak. Kaya mayroon tayong hope, mayroon tayong bright future. Can you imagine that? Itong ating bansa, kahit na mayroon tayong tinatawag na programa ng gobyerno, uh, yung tinatawag na 2000, it's good. Napakaganda pakinggan. But there is no guarantee that that should ever be fulfilled. Pero itong karyan na ipinagpangako ng ating Panginoon si Kristo sa kanyang salita ay totoo at talagang magaganap po yan. Ang sabi rito, verse 43, And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God 
to other cities also. For therefore I am sent. And they preach in the synagogue of Galilee. Naparito sa para magpahayag. Hindi lamang yung siya ipahayag kung siya mismo ang nagpahayag. Siya mismo ang nagpreach. Although he called other men to preach his gospel. But listen my friend, for, for three and a half years in his public ministry, he preached to all kinds of people. He did not neglect the work of the ministry. In Luke 19.10, you know what that uh, verse is? The Son of Man came, what? To seek and to save that which was lost. In John chapter 10, verse number 10, the Bible tells us that He came to give life and to give it more abundantly. Listen, my friend, this life this morning. Do you have the salvation that Jesus Christ came to give? Do you have this new life that Jesus Christ came to give? If not, then your celebration as Christmas has no meaning. It has no significance. It can only become meaningful in your life when you begin to trust Jesus as your Savior into your heart. When you say, Lord, come into my heart and save my soul. Give it a give of eternal life. Forgive me of all my sins. Shall we stand together for prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank thee for thy word this morning. Father, I pray for those that are here without Christ, that they may come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, their Savior, that they might know the greatest gift that they can receive, salvation of their souls. May thy Spirit be the one to reveal and to communicate the message to them. May they understand the Lord. And for us Christians, help us that we might teach other people the significance and the true meaning of Christmas. God, we pray that your name might be glorified in all things that we do. We ask all these things in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. We're going to give you an invitation to come. Because I believe, my friend, that Christmas celebration is going to be a, an empty celebration without Christ into your heart. And as we sing number... Number 131, just as I am without one plea. We want to invite you to come right here to the front and meet our preachers and tell them, Preacher, I want to be saved. I want to receive that greatest gift for my soul. Lumapit ko kayo rito. Huwag kayo mahihin lumapit dito kung kayo sumasampalataya sa ating Pena si Cristo. As we sing the first verse of this song, you come. Just as I first one to come. You come and be saved. You come and trust the Lord. Young ladies, young men, mother or father, come on. Come on, don't, uh, don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid to come. You need the Lord this morning. He is your Savior. He died for you. He came to save you. Listen, my friend, before we sing one more verse, listen. Did you know that our ministry here in this church is just a continuation of the ministry of Christ? Why? Because He has given us the command to preach the gospel to every creature, to baptize those that believe, and to teach the believers to observe all things that God has commanded. How about your life this morning? Are you a real Christian? Are you really saved? Are you really born again? Should you die today? Would your soul go to heaven? If Jesus Christ comes back before another day, are you sure that you're going to go with him? If not, then you need to come right here. You need to come and receive Christ into your heart. You are not receiving religion or a rite or a ceremony. Listen, you are receiving the very person of Jesus Christ by faith. As we sing that second verse, you come. Come on. Just as come on. I come on, please. Would you come and be saved? How about baptism? Would you come and obey the Lord in baptism? How about dedicating your life? How about obeying the Lord Jesus Christ in baptism? 
How about moving your membership to this church? Sing uh, much, but we're singing. We're going to sing one more verse. There's a family here that's going to dedicate uh, baby to the Lord. Okay, you can come and dedicate yourself and your family to the Lord. But my friend, we would like to see our friends that are here this morning come to know Christ as your Savior. Do you understand? As we sing another verse, would you please come? Just come on. As I 